Okay, welcome back to part two of making an animatic from storyboards and After Effects. Now, oddly enough, part one was talking about animating a pan or a zoom with the setup that we've had. Part two is going to be about starting from the beginning, and that's because I thought of making the videos late in the process. So, let's turn our attention over to After Effects. I'm pointing because I have my After Effects on this screen and I'm looking at this screen. So, turning our attention to After Effects here, we are going to take some raw images that we have here from the hard drive and we're going to make a sequence out of them that we can later retime and turn into an animatic. And I'll show you that to get to this step, I had made a new After Effects composition. I made a new folder by clicking on this button right here, create a new folder. And then I went to my hard drive whoop, and under where I have my files stored, I have all of Dave's images here on the hard drive. So I just selected all of them, command A or shift select all of them, and I just simply dragged them right into that folder or dragged them into the timeline and then dragged them into the folder. It doesn't matter. Um, so now we've got a whole bunch of images in here and we want to turn them into a nice animatable. Well, okay, so here's the deal. Putting all the images in line is a big pain in the neck because you'd have to drop them in one by one, scale them to the correct time sequences, but luckily After Effects does this for you. And I actually found this out by watching a video from someone on Vimeo who was nice enough to, to show this. So I don't know if you can call that stealing. Hope I'm not stealing, but if I am, I'm sorry. Kind of not because I'm glad I get to show you this too. So I'm gonna select all these images. There are 25 of them. And I am going to click and drag them down to this button right here that you see that is the button to make a new sequence from the selected images. And it's going to pop me up some options. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to select single composition because we want all of our images to be in the same composition. We're going to give them a still duration of one second because I want each of them to, I want them to be in sequence and I want them each to last one second. Uh, and I'm going to check sequence layers. That might not be checked when you first come into the dialogue, so be sure you double check that or rather check it once, but make sure you've checked it. Now I'm gonna click OK. And you see that it nicely creates this brand new sequence for me, and it's laid out everything in order uh, with everything timed to one second. Ta-da! Awesome. Now one thing that you should keep in mind is in order to do this, in order to do this, your images should be renamed or named in a sequential order. That's simple enough. Uh, if, you, if they're not in a sequential order, you can probably fix it using Photoshop. Or if you're on a Mac, you can use Automator. But that's a prerequisite that you have all of your images in sequential order, named in sequential order. And now that we've got them here in After Effects, we are going to uh, go ahead and start to retime this animatic and uh, make it a little bit more, more pretty. Uh, we, it lasts 20, about 25 seconds-ish. Um, and you can see down, well, you can't see because of my little image there. You can see there's our last clip and there's our first clip. So what I'm doing is I'm actually timing this not within this composition, but I'm timing it in my main composition, which is called Comp1. And I'm going to drag my composition that was made by After Effects down here onto Comp1. Now, I had previously animated this one called Amani Boards. Uh, and the next part in the sequence comes from Dave, so I'm going to tack that on at the end later. But right now, I'm just going to animate this one from Dave, uh, starting from frame zero to make my life easier. So I don't have to go find the end of wherever this is and animate after that. I'm just going to leave it at frame zero. Later, when we're all retimed, we'll put it uh, after Amani's stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and hide Amani's drawings right there, and we'll just work with Dave's for now. So the great thing about the approach that I've invented here. Wow, that sounded really pompous. The really convenient thing about doing the animatics this way is that when you're trying to do treat with images one at a time, you have to be adjusting the end clip. Oh, I'm sorry. Here, let's say we let's say we want to make this first one last just half a second. Well, we move this to half a second, you know, oh, we go oh, 24 or we're doing 24 frames a second. So 12 frames would be half a second, and then 
uh, we're gonna use the key command alt right bracket to make it that short and then now we have to scoot this one over two to retime it and that's a pain because you have to be hitting all kinds of keys you have to be paying all kinds of attention to where your stuff is and if you ever want to retime it you have to do a bunch of work to fix that so we're going to take advantage of after effects awesome feature for time remapping so let's go find dave's um composition here on the timeline and I'm gonna go up to the help menu and I'm gonna type time remap because I don't know where to find it in the menus. Ah, there we go. Layer, enable time, time, enable time remapping. So now we've got a keyframeable time remap, which is so great because we could just stretch this out and say instead of 25 seconds, I want it to last uh, that many seconds. but. I'm going to leave it at default for now because I know that each thing lasts about a second. Uh, and then I'm going to adjust from there. So I just I just hit, just so you know, when I'm scrubbing, I just hold down Shift and I can pop to keyframes, which is very nice. And then I'm going to hit Alt right bracket to adjust the end clip of this, uh, the ending cut point of this clip. So let's go back to frame one. And now I'm just going to, I'm just going to work on this. I haven't worked on it yet. If this video gets boring, I'm sorry, but uh, I won't know what to say until I, I do it. But um, here's some important things to remember about time remapping. You need to set a keyframe. Let's think of it like this. Time remapping is kind of like a piece of cloth that you might hang up against the wall. And it's free to move around. But wherever you stick a nail through the wall, that cloth will stick and stay, and it'll flow around all of those hard points. Well, that's what the keyframes are like when you're using time remapping. You're sticking a nail where that keyframe is into the time for that clip, and the time between all the keyframes is dynamic and is able to change based on whatever mathematical algorithms they've come up with. So what I want to do is, let's say, okay, let's look at this first clip. The boy knocks the bowl off the table with his elbow. Um, right now, if we play it, it's all really, all of the beats right now are very uh, the same. I can't even think of the words to say right now. The beats are very monotonous, boring. So let's say I want him to kind of knock it off and go, oops. Uh -huh, and freeze a little bit longer on, on this part where he's like, eh. So if you want to be really perfect, what you can do is you can hold down uh, Command and use the arrow keys to move the time slider by one frame to find exactly when that drawing changes. And you could set a keyframe there. Bloop. Or since we're just kind of dealing with a, a feeling here, you don't have to do frames. Oh, excuse me. You don't have to go frame accurate. So let's say we're gonna we're gonna find more or less where the next one switches over. Okay, we're gonna make a keyframe there. So now we have total control over how long it takes to show the things that are in between these two frames. And as I move them, all of these other frames will flow to adjust. We'll we'll change their time to adjust. So let's say we want to make him move it off the counter with a little bit more rapidity there, and then go yeah, for a little longer. So let's take a look at that and see how it looks. Uh, he's, he goes, oh, knocks it off. Huh? Dad, sigh. And the boys, uh, after that, we're allowed to advance. So once again, I've pinned it, I've stretched the time, and then all the other time is allowed to flow around it. So boys are going, oh. Yeah, that's too quick too. So I want the sputtering to last longer. I want the sputter sputter to last longer. So we'll find more or less the beginning of that, make a keyframe, and uh, make a keyframe there. At the end of that, I'm going to say, eh, take a little bit longer. Hmm. I wanted to think longer too, so I'm going to find the end of the thinking there. Make a keyframe, drag it out. There's probably a key uh, command too for making a keyframe. I should look at that, but I haven't looked it up yet. So, hmm, thinking, ah, 
So that wasn't quite long enough. And now I want that idea to last longer too. Pink. Drag that one out. Now the great thing is I can I can eyeball it and see more or less. Oh uh, yeah, these things are lasting about the same amount of time. Mm -hmm. Ah. Okay. That's exactly how it's done. At least how I do it. So this has made it a lot easier for me to change the timing when I want to because all I have to do is move a couple keyframes instead of repositioning and cutting in out of a bunch of clips. I hope it's useful to you. I may make another video later about how to do some of the animation things I was doing earlier, but for now these two parts give you a start on how to do animatic animation in After Effects. Enjoy!